No, seriously, should I? I'm not answering that question in this video. I'm asking you guys, should I go into private equity? I just realized after previewing the video I just filmed that I have Count Dracula hair, so I'm gonna do one of these. Hope the transition was smooth. Today I'm gonna talk about a very logical next step from banking, a buzzword, things people don't really kind of know about unless you're in this field, the biggest well-kept secret of the United States. Two letters, PE, not physical education, but the two giant words of finance, private equity. Initially sounds confusing and scary and big financial term words as most Wall Street terms are because we created them so that it sounds scary and so that people can't understand. Even though at the end of it, it's not that complicated. It is quite literally what it sounds like, private equity. It is the ownership of private companies, private assets, or the delisting of public companies and making it private. These firms, known as private equity firms, or a wide variety of other names that I will go into later, have a lot of money and they invest all this money into various companies and they're a holdings company of sorts and they have ownership of various private companies buy them for a price hold them hopefully grow them and sell them for a bigger price it's kind of like buying and reselling supreme which surprisingly not many of you may have noticed supreme is actually owned by a private equity firm called the carlisle group the reason why private equity is such an obvious next step for investment bankers especially in the MA space is because we basically enable these private equity firms to play what I like to call hot potato. So private equity firm A buys a private company and once they buy that private company and they grow it, they use financial magic to make it look better, make it actually better, bring in management teams to enhance the company. And after holding it for five years, this company has grown from a $10 business to a $100 business. And then they come to a investment bank like the one that I'm working for and have us reach out to buyers or potential acquirers that may buy this company for the $100 that it thinks it's valued at. Then we spread that out and go watch my first video, which I go into super detail. But basically, banks like ours enable these private equity companies to keep selling back and forth amongst the private equity universe and keep growing these small and now not so small private companies to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, these firms vary in size depending on how much money they've raised from various investors and there's smaller funds, huge funds, funds that own companies like Whole Foods before it was acquired by Amazon. These private equity firms come in all shapes and sizes. So there's your typical private equity. There's also growth equity. Venture capital is technically a form of private equity. Mezzanine funds, fund of funds, fundless funds, secondaries. The long list goes on and on and on. It just depends on what kind of investments they're looking at, how they're investing, whose money they're using, and what their various strategies are for growing slash inflating the businesses that they buy. On a next step slash career perspective, people typically do two to three years in banking and then transition into an associate role at a private equity firm. For the things that you guys really care about, technically speaking, especially nowadays, banking is starting to be a lot more competitive with the talent pool and trying to retain analysts to stay through because the turnover is so damn high. Banking tends to be very competitive with salary. If anything, in the beginning couple of years, private equity associates and maybe even VPs may make slightly less than bankers at similar level roles, depending on the firm and the compensation structure. However, in the long run, once you become a partner and you're at a private equity firm that's doing very well, it is my understanding that the compensation is night and day in the sense that bankers are fee structured, small incremental, small incremental fee makers where they're servicing the client and they take a small fee out of the total enterprise values and deal values, whereas PE partners are making loads of money and what they typically call the two and 20 structure off the profits made on that investment. So if my prior example, which probably will never happen because businesses don't grow 10 times in five years, but if it did, they will take 20% off that profit from becoming 10 to 100. I'm obviously oversimplifying things, but essentially if you wanna make steady, good, and obviously still a lot, in relativity sense. Money, stay in banking, if we're talking money alone, and if you wanna make it big, big in the long run, you go into private equity. It does start getting a little bit confusing because in banking, there's more of a linear path, and if you really want to stay and you had the grit for it, you'll probably keep going up, build the relationships through the career, and be okay. Whereas private equity, there's very limited spots at the top, and you don't need that many employees at a firm. So just because you became an associate doesn't mean, if anything, it's pretty very unlikely that you'll become a partner at that firm. A lot of variables. But basically on a money front, short to middle term, banking probably makes a bit more. And then in the long run, PE is where the cash is at. Let's not be greedy bankers for a second and take money out of the equation and just think about work itself, work life balance, and things that actually matter in life. Private equity is known to be a bit better than banking, 
you do have to realize most people, if not all people in private equity, are probably from a banking slash banking-like background. So it's still hardcore. You're still responding to emails at the late night, but you're on the buy side now and you're managing your own thing. And you're slightly getting closer to what I like to call a real company. You're not a services-oriented client-facing company. You are the client now. And there's a bit more power on that side. You feel more ownership of work because your firm technically owns these companies that you're working with or the companies that you're about to own. And I think there's a lot less formatting, aligning logos, especially compared to banking, because a lot of the stuff that you're sharing is internal and appealing to the internal board, the internal investors, and letting them know, hey, we wanna invest in this company, slash we're about to exit the investment in this company. This is obviously me hearing from people I have no personal experience in private equity, but just visualizing and what I've seen working directly with private equity associates on deals, it seems like they have a slightly better understanding of what is to come down their pipeline of work and also more of an initiative as they are the company itself rather than our side where we are servicing that company. At the same time, there's a lot of operational slash business risk because you can invest hundreds of millions of dollars in a company and then have it be not relevant or have something like COVID ruin it, especially because private equity companies, when they structure these deals, they have a pretty long timeline that they're not gonna exit that investment for. It's typically three to five years. I think the duration is getting slightly shorter these days, but even then getting tied to some Thing for two to five years and having that not result in anything is a scary thought and it can also really screw over a fund if they have hundreds of millions of dollars invested in one thing and it doesn't result in anything. Whereas in banking, as long as there's a client universe, you can continue to churn out deals, continue to adapt, and there's not much being tied to that and you're still gonna be able to rip out a fee as long as deals close or you're able to bring in more business. There's pros and cons. There's a reason why people choose to stay in one or go into another. It's just thinking about, do you wanna be on the client facing side, the client side, be okay with the risks, but do you wanna make more money? Typical overthinking. Just all the crazy humbo jumbo thoughts behind career switches and jumps. On a recruiting standpoint, private equity is a bit more selective than banking. I think a bit might be an understatement. It's very selective because they just need less people and each firm has a select number of associates they need every year. It's a very highly competitive field. All these bankers are trying to get into private equity. You're also starting to compete with consultants who want to jump into private equity, MBA people that want to go into private equity. It's pretty damn competitive. Just a similar kind of pool for a much narrower number of spots. So these interviews are known to be hard. You got to know your technicals. You got to have a story. You got to be networking. It's pretty rough from whatever. It also works a little differently because you're not going through schools anymore. It's not a target school system, but more of a target firm system and that these recruiters slash headhunters that these private equity firms hire reach out directly to you or a email listserv saying, hey, private equity firm Brian John Capital is hiring an associate for a next year start, a two year start. We want you to interview. Please send over your resume if you're interested. And on that note, it does become super stressful in the sense that some firms hire three months into your banking job. So you're right out of college and it's September, you're working on one deal, you don't even know banking as yet, you don't even know where the coffee's at the office, and someone is reaching out to you saying, do you want a job that's gonna start in two years? I don't know how I feel about it. I think it makes sense in terms of companies wanting to grab talent when they see it. It also means it's a prisoner's dilemma because if everyone's hiring earlier, the other person wants to hire earlier, and it just keeps coming earlier and earlier. But at the same time, in the same way that banking is hiring early and earlier, junior year, sophomore year. And as I could tell by the comments, everyone is going crazy over, Brian, should I start thinking about banking when I'm 15 and I'm taking algebra one? Private equity is kind of a similar way where how would you know if you wanted to do this before you even barely started the job that you're currently at? It is the same field and hopefully if you're committed to banking, you have thought a bit about finance industry as a whole, but I don't know. Committing to a job, interviewing for a job, telling an interviewer that you really want this job, even though you don't even know how your current job really is, seems troublesome to me. That was a typical Brian long rant. Let's summarize it really quick. Private equity firms are entities that hold private equity, private money from a rich person or a bunch of rich people, and they invest in companies, they grow the company, and they sell the company later and make that return of the difference between what you sell for and what you buy for. They hire banks, like the ones that I work for, to serve as intermediaries for these transactions. And the partners at these firms make a lot of money based on how much profit they make. It's a logical next step for investment bankers to go into because they have a lot of experience working with them 
as private equity firms function as clients to investment banks. There are a wide variety of private equity firms depending on where the money comes from, how much money they have, their strategies, what they invest in. And there's a lot of pros and cons of both being a banker and being a private equity person. But also putting my philosophy hat on. At the end of the day, a job is a job. You should do what you think is right. And my one controversial opinion of the day is that hiring so early in advance, I think creates a difficult environment for all. I understand why they do it, but I'm not sure how you're supposed to know what you want to do before you barely begin what you're doing now. Because frankly, when I was in first grade, I wanted to be the president. And right now, I don't want to be the president. I want to take this time to make a serious statement about how grateful I am about 6,000 subscribers and just this community as a whole. I actually had a relatively crazy experience last week where I was walking down Michigan Avenue in Chicago and someone stopped me to ask, for a picture. I thought he was asking me to take a picture of him, but it ended up being that he watches me on YouTube and we took a picture together and it was so crazy to me. I actually asked him for a picture as well, which is probably not very celebrity-like, even though I'm obviously not a celebrity. But back to the serious mood. Thank you so much guys for 6,000 subscribers. I don't know why you guys continue to watch me. I don't think I provide anything crazy or over the top or anything that you can't find based on a Google search. But I also do love talking into a camera and I love providing any guidance I can. I really appreciate all the love and your continuous support. Not to get weirdly emotional, but especially during these pandemic times as an extrovert, but just as a whole, YouTube really gets me through the week. So thanks so much for 6,000 subscribers and I will see you guys next week.